Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about impulse and momentum in a particle. So, so far, uh, we've used kinematics to relate position, velocity, and acceleration in a body. Uh, we've used the force, mass, and acceleration branch of kinetics to relate forces to the motion of those bodies. Uh, we've used the work and energy methods, the second branch of kinetics, as an alternative way to relate forces and motion. Uh, and then finally, we're going to use the impulse momentum method, which is a third branch of kinetics as an alternate to both the force mass and acceleration method as well as the work and energy method. So impulse and momentum uh, and the impulse momentum pr principle uh, are related in that the net impulse exerted on a body over some time will be equal to the change in that body's momentum. In equation form, this is what this looks like. So J which is our impulse, uh, is going to be equal to the change in momentum. So momentum final minus momentum initial. All right, before we get into what the principle says and how to apply it, we need to define our terms. So impulse and momentum. Starting with impulse, uh, the impulse of a simple constant magnitude force will be equal to the magnitude of the force uh, times the duration of time that that force is exerted. So J is equal to force times time. Uh, for any non-constant magnitudes uh, for that force, the impulse of any force is equal to the integral of the force function over the set period of time. Um, so the integral of F of T dt uh, would be the more accurate and complete version of our uh, impulse. Uh, and so if we have some force function uh, it kind of goes up and down over time. If we take the integral or the area under the curve, uh, that area under the curve is going to be equal to our impulse, uh, at least the magnitude of our impulse. And in terms of direction, so these are vector quantities, and the direction of the forces is simply going to be the direction of the impulse. Uh, so there are instances where the force is going to change direction over time, but we're not going to deal with that situation. Uh, for now, we're going to stick to constant direction forces for our impulses. All right, so we often also use uh, the impulse momentum equations in instances where we have something called impulsive forces. So these are forces that have a very large magnitude but are exerted over a very short period of time. Um, so impact or collision forces are usually impulsive forces. So if we imagine uh, we've got a tennis player here hitting a tennis ball with a racket, uh, that force between the tennis ball and the tennis racket uh, is going to be a very large force, but it's going to be exerted over just a couple milliseconds. Uh, so that would be an example of an impulsive force. Uh, other examples, something like a basketball bouncing off the ground, uh, or the forces in a car crash, all of those are going to be considered impulsive forces. Uh, there is no hard and fast definition of what's impulsive versus what's a non-impulsive force, but generally large magnitude, short period of time, considered an impulsive force. Uh, so why do we care about impulsive forces? Well, uh, for forces that only last for a couple milliseconds, it can be very difficult to directly measure them, uh, particularly to get a direct, a very accurate measure of kind of what the peak is on that very short period of time. Um, the impulse momentum equations, however, can deal with the uncertainty of these forces, uh, as we're going to see later. So. If we have impulsive forces, we tend to use the impulse momentum equations uh, to solve those problems. All right, moving on to momentum. So the momentum of a body will be equal to the mass of the body times the velocity of that body. Uh, in equation form, m times v, uh, mass is a scalar quantity, does not have a direction, but velocity does have direction. Uh, and unlike an impulse, which needs to occur over time, Momentum is instantaneous. Uh, so this is going to mirror the work and energy methods where we had work done over time and then a initial energy and a final energy. Here we have an impulse done over time uh, and a momentum initial and a momentum final where the impulse happens between those two times. Um, so we're going to be particularly interested in some initial momentum and some final momentum. Uh, with the impulse acting between those two points in time. Uh, and momentum has a direction as well. 
and the momentum is simply going to be equal to the direction of the momentum will be simply be equal to the direction of the velocity at that initial or final state uh, that we have. All right, so impulse and momentum in two dimensions. So remember that both impulse and momentum are vector quantities. Um, so our equation is this, uh, but uh, that means for two dimensional problems, we can rewrite the vector equation as two scalar equations. So impulse can be broken down into X and Y components and momentum, uh, specifically the velocity component of momentum can also be broken down into X and Y components. Uh, so generally when we have a problem that is one dimension or two dimensions or three dimensions, we're going to start by breaking our vector equation into our component equations. Uh, and then we will solve from there. All right, that's all I've got for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.